Alright, so in this video I would like to show you a further list command, namely dispatch. And as an example I'm going to use something we created in a previous exercise. Um, it was a surface which looks similar to the Sage Gates head building and we took this surface and divided it and created planar subsurfaces. And now what I would like to do is I'm going to go to the right hand side and I'm going to draw a line going basically through the building. Let's go to uh, up here and then down again. And what I would like to have is, I'm going to change a few points here, make it a little bit more extreme. Pull this down, push this up. And what I want to do with this line is I want to have all the tiles underneath this line uh, I want to give them a different appearance than the tiles above them. So you could imagine um, the, the lower half being windows and the upper half being roof or being of two different materials. And to show that in, in Grasshopper, I'm going to use the, the, the custom preview block. And I'm going to have uh, two of these. And I'm going to give them different colors. And I'm simply going to use a color swatch here. I'm going to be quite lazy. I'm going to give it something of a gray value. And the other one is going to have something of a blue value. And you can probably do this a lot nicer than I can, giving it some some real material properties such as reflectance and such. Let's go for light blue here. All right. So if I now plug in all these surfaces, I'm going to hide these surfaces. And if I plug them into this, I get this gray tiling. If I plug them into here, I get a blue tiling. But what I uh, want to have is that the lower half or everything below that line is blue and everything above that is gray. So how do we go about that? Well, I'm going to create some space here. Pressing the Alt key, I can bring in some separation. All right. So first thing I need to do is get this uh, curve into my grasshopper. So the usual, whoopsie daisy, curve, set one curve, here we go. And I'm actually going to move that curve, I'm going to move that curve outside the building because um, to make sure that they're all below this curve, I'm actually going to have to extrude this through the building once. So I'm going to use an extrude. Plug in that curve, should be in X direction. And something like 200. Oops, wrong direction. So I'm going to turn that around with a negative block. And now we've got the surface going through the building. So now, how do I get at the, the points of this? these individual surfaces. I'm actually going to go with the center of each of these and to get at that you can use the area command. And if you plug that in you get a calculation of the actual surface area and as an output you get the centroid as well so you get a point in the centroid of that area. Let me turn off the profiler here. Now that's all good. Now I'm going to now I need to determine which of these points actually lies above the surface. And for that, I can use a command called project. So I can project a point. So I can project a point onto um, some form of geometry in a certain direction. So right now it's going uh, into negative one in the z direction, so downwards. And what I want to do is I want to project all points up and then those below the surface will actually hit the surface and those which are above won't hit the surface. And in a second you'll see what that gives us. So this is our geometry we want to project uh, against and these are our points and now I just need to change the direction in which we're going. We're going up in the z direction. Okay so now let's hide these points and actually I'm going to hide the surface. Here we go. Um, you can see that it's projected all these 
points from the center of the panels up and the middle has stayed empty. And what does this actually look like in the data structure? Well, if we go to a panel and look at what's come out here in points, let's make this a little bit wider. And actually, let's go all the way to the front and flatten this because we don't care about the data structure. We just want a simple list. There we go, flattened. So now I've got a list of points. And you can see that it's all fine and dandy until here. And then we get nulls, which means there is no data in this slot. This is an empty entry in that list. And we can use this information to dispatch our surfaces into these two different uh, custom previews. Let's keep this down here just to be able to look at it. Make it a little bit longer so you can see some null items. And now to actually come to the dispatch. So this command will take a list and a pattern of true and false and then put everything with its index set to true into A and everything with its index set to false into B. So now we need to turn this list into something that says true, 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 true up here and then false, false, false down here or the other way around. It doesn't really matter. But we need to turn this into trues and falses. And luckily, there is a bunch of commands for dealing with null items. Namely, you can replace the nulls with sensible values. So let's say you want to replace all the nulls with zeros or ones. You can do that. But we're going to use the null item. And the null item takes um, a bunch of items or a single item and tests if it is null. And if it is null, it will give us true. So if I plug in this, let's take another panel and look at what comes out. Then you can see that for everywhere where we got a point in this list, we get a, a false and everywhere we've got a null, we've got a true. So index 12 here comes out as true. So if I now use this to dispatch the original geometry, all of the items which were projected are false, so they'll come out of B, and that will be our windows, and everything else will come out of A. So plug in the planar surfaces because that's the list we want to dispatch. And actually, I can hide this. There we go. And then I'm going to use the pattern we created to uh, spit it into the B and the A. So now we've got 890 in one and 710 in the other. And what did I say? I think B was going to be our windows. So that's B and that's A. And hey presto, we've successfully divided our surfaces into two groups with one being now colored blue and one being colored gray. I'm going to turn off some of these. And if you change this curve, this will actually change as well. So if I go here and I move this up, for example, it'll update and create a new dispatch. So you can use this command to sort a list into two different outputs, and all you need is a set of trues and false. And another way you can you usually create these is if you go to math and you go to operators, you can see that you've got checks such as equality, larger than, smaller than. So you can check if something is, for example, longer than a certain length, or you can check if something's above a certain Z value. There's one important note. You don't only have equality, you also have similarity. And the reason you might want to use similarity instead of equality is rounding errors. In CAD software, you often get rounding errors where somewhere on the 10th digit behind the comma, your values are slightly different due to floating point errors in calculations. And then it's useful to use a similarity block in place of the equals block and just tell it, okay, if it's off by 0.1%, for example, we'll still count it as equal. Okay, so that's the dispatch block with which you can dispatch lists into two different lists given a criteria which is expressed as false and trues. Thank you for watching.